Welcome back as we continue our walk through 1 Timothy. We're busy with 1 Timothy 3, looking at the requirements for eldership. And we come now to one that is quite paradoxical. The typical translation says that an elder must be a husband of one wife. But what I'm going to show you is that you can have no wife and meet the requirement. You can have more than one wife, or at least have had more than one wife, and meet the requirement. Or you can be the husband of one wife, but not meet the requirement. Let's have a look at it. The verse says, an overseer, just another word for an elder, must be above reproach. So above reproach is our umbrella requirement. It means that no one is able to justly point a finger at him as being unworthy of the office of an overseer. What is going to follow is a set of areas in which the overseer needs to be blameless or above reproach. And the first one is that he must be the husband of one wife. This is the ESV. The Greek is mias gynekos aneir. We could translate it a husband of one wife or a man of one woman. And historically, there have been four commonly held views. Some would say five. I think two of them go together. But I think three of them are completely wrong. So firstly, some people say that this requirement is there to say that a person who becomes an overseer may not be a divorcee. And there's just no good basis for believing that. So I think we can eliminate that one off the cuff. Secondly, a variation of that, some people would say it means that he must not have been remarried. Some would say that means divorced and remarried. Others would say even if his previous wife died, he can only have one wife in a lifetime and qualify for being an overseer. But nothing in the tenure of our passage says that counting how many wives you've had is a criterion for being an elder. We're all focused here on the character of the person, noble character that is above reproach, especially as measured by the values of the context in which the person's going to serve. It makes no sense to me, biblically or in any culture I can imagine, that somebody who is a widow and has been a widower and has been faithful to his wife could be excluded on those grounds. So a little bit crazy there. A common view is that it's talking about not having two wives at the same time. In other words, not being a polygamist. However, that's probably a very unusual situation in the culture of the day, and it's unlikely that's the primary thing Paul is proscribing. What the passage is talking about, I believe, is saying that a husband must be a faithful husband. A one-woman kind of man meaning a faithful husband, someone who doesn't have wandering eyes, someone who isn't flirtatious, someone who isn't relating inappropriately to other women. And so the point is, you can be unmarried and yet be a one-woman kind of man, somebody who's looking to be married, not looking to have inappropriate relationships. That would qualify. So it's not saying if you're not married, you can't be an elder. The overwhelming majority of candidates for eldership at the time would have been married men. So Paul's using the default category that you likely would be a married man to lay down this key criterion. It implies, though, that you could have had more than one wife. And yet, if you are currently a faithful husband above reproach in the way that you relate to your wife and to other women, then I think you meet the criterion. Conversely, I may have had only one wife in my entire lifetime and I may be at least outwardly faithful to her. But if I'm relating to other women in inappropriate ways, if I've got wandering eyes and an adulterous heart, I probably don't meet this criterion. So the focus of this text is on the character of the potential overseer or elder. And what Paul is telling us is the candidate must be above reproach, must be blameless in terms of how he relates to his wife and broader to all women in the church community. There must be nothing that would stick to him as inappropriate. He has no inappropriate relationships. He doesn't have wandering eyes or a lustful heart. 
as an aside, this doesn't say that a man who is unmarried can't be an elder. Paul's just assuming the normal candidate would be a married man. By the same token, we could debate whether it implies that only a married man and not, say, a married woman could be an elder. Again, he's assuming the default and laying down that the character requirement is one of loyalty that is above reproach, of faithfulness sexually that is not in dispute. Not only that the person hasn't had other liaisons, but that they are truly a one-woman kind of man. So I think that's the heart of this requirement. Uh, it's not talking about polygamy. It's not talking about divorce and remarriage. It's saying that the character of a potential overseer must be one of being above reproach in his relation to the opposite sex. Particularly, assuming most would be married, above reproach in relation to his wife and to other women in the community. Hope that's helpful. Please give it a like and a subscribe if it is, and I'll see you next time.